Please stand as we begin our celebration. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is a great joy for all of us to be here today as we celebrate the first Holy Communion of our young children. This is a special day where they get to receive the body and blood of Christ for the first time. And today I'm very happy that we have a great showing of um, clergy with us today. Of course, we have Father Leon Bernard, our pastor. I'm Father Dan Ulmer, parochial vicar. This is Deacon Greg Gollin, our deacon. And then, of course, um, Father Joe Tokaz, who is our other parochial vicar. We also have um, Father Michael Evans, who is joining us, as well as Father Sean Paul Fleming. We thank you for being here to, for our celebration today. And my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have accomplished the work of human redemption through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant that we who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ may experience continued increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses told the people, Don't forget how the Lord your God led you in the desert for 40 years. The Lord did this so that you would learn to depend on him, and he wanted to know if you were truly willing to obey him. The Lord made you go hungry. Then he gave you manna, a kind of food that you and your ancestors had never heard about. He did this to teach you that people need more than food to live. They need every word that the Lord has spoken, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when we drink from the cup that we ask God to bless, isn't that sharing in the blood of Christ? When we eat the bread that we break, isn't that sharing in the body of Christ? By sharing in the same loaf of bread, we become one body, 
even though there are many of us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen. I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also he who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, he who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. So for our friends who were at the First Communion at 9.30 this morning, they had an opportunity to see Father Leon's finest workout clothing in his First Communion suit. But I want to share with you something a little bit more practical, something that I tend to use every day that's kind of always a part of me. It's always on my body. And this is, who knows what this is? Yes, this is my cell phone. Very good. What kind of phone is it? iPhone. Very good. Now, what kind of things can you do on your phone? Okay, you can go on social media. Very good. What else? You can make phone calls. Very good. I can call the priest right now to see if they forgot to turn off their cell phones. A Snapchat. Good social media. Let's see. What else can we do on our phones? Yes. Play games. Absolutely. Oh, I see a couple hands over here. Text message, very good. Play games. Look at images, yes. Oh, you can watch TV, very good. So we see that there's a lot of things we can do on our cell phones, right? Some of them are kind of entertainment, like we can play games or go on social media, but really what it's for, it's for communication. 
So if I need to get a hold of somebody, you know, I can call them or text them. Like if I need to talk to my mother, I just call her up on my phone and then she answers, right? Yeah, who's talked to somebody on the phone before? Yeah, exactly. So this is how we communicate with people. Now, who's on the back of my phone? Who's on my phone case? Jesus, very good. So I have the sacred heart of Jesus on my phone. I don't know if everybody can see that. So this for me is a reminder that not only do I communicate with the world, but I'm called to communicate with Jesus. Now, how do we communicate with Jesus? Let's see. I see a hand over here. We pray. Excellent. Go to church. Beautiful. You strive to be like him. Be very good. Did you have your hand up? Okay. Yes. How else do we communicate with Jesus? These are all really good answers. Pray. We pray. Excellent. So we've heard people say, you know, we go to church. We pray. We strive to live lives like Jesus and to be like Jesus. Now, what are we doing today that's very special that lets us communicate with Jesus? I just want to see who hasn't had their hand up yet. Yes. Holy Communion. Yes, very good. Because so, so when we receive the host, what are we? Re- who are we receiving? Let's all say it together. One, two, three. Jesus. Jesus. Very good. So today we get to receive Jesus in this very special way, and there's this great saying: "You are what you eat." So we're literally going to eat Jesus. But what that means is that we get to become more like him. Now, if we're going to become more like Jesus, what do you think we have to do? Be kind. Excellent. Pray often. Very good. Worship God. Excellent. Anybody back here? Yes. Spread the word of God. Absolutely. See, I see a hand over here. Forgive others. Beautiful. Follow the word of God. Be honest. Excellent. Let's see. Do I have any hands on the other side? Raise them high. Oh, good. I see a couple. Receive communion every week. Be good to others help others. And did you have your hand up? Okay, yes. Go to adoration. Ooh, I love that. So today what we're doing is we're we're going to receive communion for the first time, and this is an exciting gift. You know, think about how close you get to be with Jesus today. When you come up for communion, you get to receive him. But this isn't something that we just do once, just today. This is something that we can do every day of our lives. We get to receive Jesus and we get to have that close encounter with him. And of course, as our friend said, we can go to adoration as well, and we can pray to Jesus in adoration. But this reminds us that because we receive communion, we're called to go out and to live a better life. We're called to go out and to share the graces we received from being having that communion with Jesus, with others. And this is where when we come up to the altar today to receive communion, it's exciting. That's a great moment to have that encounter with God. But it's too exciting for us to just keep to ourselves, right? So we have to go and we have to spread the gospel message throughout the world. We have to go, we have to pray, we have to be kind, we have to forgive others. We have to go do those things that Jesus would do so that we can be like him, so that we can become what we, who we are, who we eat. So today as we come for communion, let us remember, we're not just communicating on our cell phone, right? We're not just communicating with each other, but we're also called to communicate with Jesus as well. And may God bless you as you come up to receive him in communion for the first time. And may that always be part of your lives, where you come frequently to receive Jesus and always have that encounter with him so you can take his presence with you throughout the world and go share the gospel message with others. I invite you to please stand as we offer our prayers and petitions to our Father in heaven.
God, our Father, we thank you for gathering us here today as our young children prepare to receive the First Holy Communion. And we ask you to hear these prayers and petitions to be placed before you today. For our parish priests, Father Leon, Father Dan, and Father Joe, that they will continue to guide us in our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the world, help them to bring peace to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who do not believe in God, help them to find God in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, that we may always take care of them and remember them in our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents, that they will continue to bring us closer to Jesus through the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased members of our families who could not be with us today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask to hear these prayers, those we voice out loud, and the many more that we voice in the silence of our hearts. Hear and answer them in accordance with your most holy will. And we ask this, and we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We'll lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the gates to ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you made them holy so that the human race, bound by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we, as we approach this table, the wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory the Great and all of the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Roll him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other that same sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Today, for the distribution of Holy Communion, we're going to let our first communicants go first. So we're going to let the first communicants come, communicants come forward to receive Holy Communion. And then after they're done, the rest of the ministers will proceed to their stations for the distribution. The ushers will be around to guide you.
Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to take a moment, first of all, to congratulate our first communicants on this very special day. Congratulations. And there, there are so many people that we need to thank for making today so special. Um, first of all, from your parents and your godparents and your family and friends that have brought you to this point, who have really helped you to grow into that faith. We also want to thank our family faith formation, uh, Michael Ruzala, and in a special way, Kathy Tefalero, for all of their work in preparing today's liturgy and getting you all ready to receive the sacraments today. Uh, we also want to thank um, Father Michael and Father Sean Paul for joining us here in the sanctuary. A thank you to Nancy Erdman and the Quabal family for the beautiful music. And thank you to our altar servers. Thank you to all of our ushers. Thank you to the Knights of Columbus. Father Leon, am I forgetting anybody? Sounds good to me. And thank you for everybody for being here. And if I forgot you, please know that we appreciate you and we appreciate all that you've done. 
Um, after the procession, um, the clergy will move over to the St. Francis statue for to open up the clergy photo booth. So feel free to meet us over there. <laughs> and again, congratulations on the First Holy Communion. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.